G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series. Today what we're going to be looking at is steering and we're going to be looking at it in regards to your Series Land Rover. But this is something that you can also use on any other vehicle because basically whether you like it or not, it doesn't really matter what manufacturer actually made the vehicle. The principles that underline these vehicles and actually allow these vehicles to function is pretty much smack bang on the same. So join me as we go into another in-depth video on some of the tips, tricks that you yourself can look for with your own off-road going vehicle and how you can fix them, maintain them and keep them running better than ever. So one of the best places to start, I think, in regards to steering is where it all ends up, at the wheel. Now, with the Series 2 Land Rover here, this is something you really need to check. Something that's not mentioned in the workshop manuals or service uh, descriptions, anything like that. What you want to look for is play in the wheel itself. Now what do I mean by that? Well, it's really simple. What happens, or how it actually works, is quite simple. You've got the wheel here, you've got the top of the swivel hub housing, which is basically allows the wheel to pivot left and right, or inwards and outwards. And basically what happens is the bolts on top of it, or the nuts and the studs, slowly come loose. And when they come loose, what happens is you get excessive play. Worst case scenario, they become looser, looser and looser, and you start losing one, maybe two, and the final couple of bolts or studs that are left there have no strength laterally. They're designed to actually pull it together, not to have any sideways strength. So you hit a big bump, pothole, washout, um, difficult corrugations and these bolts or these studs will shear, you'll lose your steering, you'll go through a ditch, a bush or whatever it may be and you'll roll the car. So I think it's pretty important to check it regularly. This is something I didn't know when I first owned this vehicle, it's something that I picked up from listening to people, talking to people over the years and finding out for myself. So basically what you need to do is you can either jack up the vehicle or you can just give it a good old move and what you can do is you can just feel the slot you can hear the steering wheel actually actually move and if you're not too sure about it get a helpful friend so you just move it a bit you can look around the front Okay, that seems alright because I've actually tightened the nuts up recently at a service. Now the next thing you need to look for is a little bit further up the actual system. So we'll move around the front and I'll talk to you about that. So the steering system itself is exactly the same as what you'll find on any other off-road going vehicle. Basically you've got two rods, you've got one that comes from the passenger side wheel it goes up to the steering relay here then you've got another rod that goes from the passenger side wheel right over to the driver's side so basically when we turn the wheel this arm here moves and let's say we want it to go to the left so the passenger side it'll push it that way that then pushes the wheel that way pushes the other rod that goes to the driver's side wheel or pulls the driver's side wheel sorry that way too, then both wheels are facing to the passenger side, that way. And that's basically how it works. Now we've got ball joints in here, and these ball joints can wear over time, and when these wear, what actually happens is you get slop. So you end up actually losing the, um, 
response from the steering wheel. So you might do it half a turn, but you're losing a quarter of that turn actually in the ball joint itself. Now I'll get you under here and I'll just show you a few more things. So this is the ball joint that I was t telling you about. You've got a total of one, two, three, four, I think about five. You've got a grease nipple here and you've got a rubber boot at the top here. Now if you're on a bit of a budget what you can do is you can and these are actually perished you you can just buy the boots themselves. You want to grease these regularly I'd say once every 12 months that's sort of what I do for the miles that I'm doing and that's more than sufficient. You don't want to go over the top with the grease either you just just one pump will do with your grease gun. Now you can see here there's actually an arm and I'll just take you underneath there. there. So you can see this arm here and this is the steering arm and this goes to obviously a shaft here and this goes into the chassis. Now this is known as the steering relay and this is a sad little component that everyone forgets because what happens with this here is the oil seal fails at the bottom all the oil comes out, drains on the ground, keeps the dust suppressed, but doesn't remain up in here. There's two Bakelite cones in here, and what happens is they slowly become slightly seized. So you don't get a nice easy, I guess, um, operation of the steering wheel. And this ends up causing your series Land Rover to end up tacking down the road. So it's really important, I'd recommend for any half decent restoration or overhaul that you're looking at doing on your vehicle, replace this. It's a bit of a pain to get out, but it makes your world a heck of a lot easier. So one of the tips and tricks if your vehicle is on the road that you need to look at is this bolt here. It comes loose. And obviously then you've got play situated in here and you'll find that you're making a lot more adjustments as you're driving along than necessary. Really you shouldn't have to make any, um, even without a steering relay. Uh, these vehicles pretty much self-correct themselves and the steering is actually quite light for a vehicle that's got no power steering, just uh, Armstrong power steering. So that's pretty much there for the steering underneath the vehicle. Uh, we'll go into the engine bay because there's one more tip and that'll get this video sorted. Okay, so a little bit difficult to see because of the light. I do apologise. We'll do the best we can. So this here is your steering box. That's here. A bit difficult to show you at the moment because the vehicle's all together. But there's a series of four studs here and four nuts. You've then got your sorry, then got your shaft that comes out of here. You've got another nut, and then you've got a I guess a lever that goes down, and you've then got a shaft that goes forward to the steering relay. Now, let's see if we can get you right in there. Just the camera, there we are. So you can see pretty much just here you've got a nut. Now what happens, these can actually come loose. So when you actually turn the steering wheel, the actual whole steering box moves. So it's really handy if you're getting a vehicle back on the road and you haven't taken the steering box out of the vehicle to get a friend just to have a look at the steering box while you turn the wheel because if that is moving then you need to get that fixed ASAP so that's another top tip now what they tend to use on this vehicle to great effect is obviously uh, tin locking tabs so basically you'll have a series of tabs to actually hold or be folded up onto that actual nut so you need to knock those off tighten it up knock them back on or replace them and off you go but that doesn't happen too often, but it is something to be mindful of. So anyway, I hope you found this video of use. Um, I haven't gone into 
the lubricants that you actually need to use for your steering box or the grease that you actually need to use for your ball joints. Um, you can find that easy enough in any good workshop manual. But these are tips and tricks, as I said, that I've found over the years. And the most important thing is I found out about them by listening to others who've knocked around with these vehicles for a long, long time. And that's really, really important. So anyway, as always, hope you've enjoyed this content. Hope it's been of use to you. And if you are enjoying the content here at Seriously Series, then please do consider supporting us via Patreon or supporting us via PayPal on our website, which you can find the link for in the content section down below. If you're new to the channel, then click on the subscribe button, click on the notification button too, and that way you won't miss out on one single video. And more importantly, if you have any questions that you want answered in regards to these vehicles or other vehicles, then be sure to put a comment in the comment section down below, and if you have a few tips and tricks yourself that you want to share with others, then put a comment down there too. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in our next video.